Hello guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. Um, I'm doing this a little bit early just because um, in the next four days I'm going to be moving out of California and it's a little bit hectic right now so I just wanted to film this and get this done and out of the way. Um, in the month of September I read a total of five books. Really enjoyed most of the books that I read this month. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. It's a little dirty how the whole thing started. I don't even really know what you so the first book I read this month was one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I, unfortunately, I ended up giving it 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really did love it. I just didn't love it in the way I was expecting to. You know, this book is about a girl named Maddie who is allergic to everything in the world, like literally everything. She can't even step outside of her house. One day she sees the boy who moves in next door named Ollie and they kind of start to like instant message each other and she starts to like fall for him but I mean obviously she can't go out of her house so how is this ever going to work? It was a really really cute story. The ending kind of ruined the entire experience for me um, just because I felt like it was such a cop out ending on the author's part and I just... I felt like it could have been such a stronger ending for that cute, amazing story. And I really loved throughout the story, she had all these cute little like graphs and pictures throughout it and um, all these amazing quotes. Wanting just leads to more wanting. There's no end to desire. And like stuff like that. Like she just had like a lot of really beautiful quotes and I appreciated it. I just didn't love the overall book as much as I thought it was. The ending was just all kind of weird. The second book I read in the month of September was The Martian by Andy Weir. I finally freaking read this. I've I ordered this book in like April and I really have been wanting to read it, but I wanted to wait until a little bit closer to when the movie's supposed to come out. And the movie comes out in about a week at in the beginning of October, so I definitely am happy that I got around to this. Um, I gave this book four out of five stars. It was very, very good, very intense um, and different. I'm not a big science fiction reader, um, but I definitely enjoyed this. Um, this book's about, you know, if you haven't heard by now, it's about this astronaut named Mark Watney who goes to Mars with his crew and he gets stranded on Mars because they think he's dead when he when this storm on Mars happens. And so he gets stranded there and he has to figure out a way to survive. <sighs> it's just so hectic and intense and honestly I really love this book like Mark Watney's character is so funny and like lighthearted throughout the seriousness of this book like obviously it's a very intense like oh like I experienced so much anxiety while I was reading this because I was just pulling for him like I wanted him to live and I wasn't sure what was gonna happen and highly recommend this one. All right, the third book I read in the month of September was um, Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, and this is actually the third and final book I've read by Morgan Matson. Now I've officially read all of her books that she's published currently, and I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I do think Since You've Been Gone is still her strongest novel in my opinion, just because it's like Since You've Been Gone is everything I love about a book. It's just, it's lighthearted. It's a coming of age story and it's all these beautiful things and like while Second Chance Summer is also a coming of age story it's a little bit more emotional and sad and um, I think the characters are a little bit more immature like um, in Second Chance Summer she's 17 years old um, but she had this love interest when she was 12. I think it's written for a little bit of a younger audience maybe I mean I'm 20 years old and I found it a little bit young for me, but I don't know. I mean, I still enjoyed it. I just try to put myself in the perspective. Just kind of sad because, you know, the whole reason why she's going back to this lake house for a second summer is because her dad is dying of cancer. And it was just really like sad. It was like, it was like the last song by Nicholas Sparks, basically. Like it was really hard to read about. And even in the book, like her dad shared a lot of similar qualities with my dad and it made it even harder to read, you know, because like I'm really close with my dad and like can't even imagine. I just loved seeing Taylor grow up and understand and become mature and learn these things. So pretty good book. I would still recommend since you've been gone over this one though. All right, the fourth book I read in the month of September was by far my favorite book of the month and that was Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. I gave this book five out of five stars and honestly it's like one of my favorite books of the year and ever now. This book is so beautiful. Like the best way I know how to describe it is like a modern version of The Notebook basically but with more plot twists. I have been comparing this book um, on Goodreads in my Instagram to Unteachable by Leah Rader and uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but like Unteachable by Leah Rader is one of my favorite love romance novels of all time. And so 
just me comparing this book to that just should tell you enough like how great this book is. Um, it's about these two characters named Matt and Gracie who met in college um, when they were in their early 20s and they obviously fell in love and he's a photographer for National Geographic or he dreams to be and then um, she's a celloist and you know plays her cello and she has a passion for music. Our story at the beginning here takes place uh, 15 years later when um, they see each other on a New York subway the, like he sees her as the doors close and they recognize each other as soon as the subway is like taking off so it's like oh my god and so then he writes this missed connections ad on Craigslist um, and it's like to the green eyed lovebird who you know we met 15 years ago in college and like that's how the book starts basically and you're like left wondering like oh my gosh like how like who are they and how are they in love with, like how did they meet you know like all this kind of stuff and it's just so cute and it's so well written it's written in obviously past and present tense the past is like the college chapters where they're like really really adorable and a lot younger and then the present chapters when it's 15 years later and they're both in their like mid 30s by now but it was so so good and it like made me cry and like it was so beautiful like honestly it is like a modern version of the notebook but it's like better in my opinion just because the characters are a lot, a lot more realistic and not so like cookie cutter nicholas sparks characters like, ugh, i can't talk enough about how great this book is it's like if you love contemporary new adult romance novels like this is the one you need to read like you need to read it all right in the last book i read 172 hours on the moon by Johan Harsted, I believe is how you say it, sorry. This book was really creepy. I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. I really did enjoy it. It was an intense, creepy, like gripping novel. I read it all in one sitting actually last night. As soon as I started reading it, I like couldn't put it down because it was so intense and mysterious and like I needed to know what was happening and then like the scenes that were actually on the moon were so creepy it like literally gave me the chills and like creeped me out with its imagery and oh, it was amazing um this book is basically about these three teenagers who get randomly selected by NASA to go to the moon for 172 hours and it's basically about like a week it's this girl named Mia that's from Norway, it's a girl Midori who's from Japan, and a guy named Antoine who's from France. The only reason why I gave it 4 out of 5 stars as opposed to 5 is because I do feel like the characters were a little, like, not as developed as they could have been, and they were a little bit forgettable in my opinion. That still didn't take away from how amazing the writing and the story was. I was very invested in the story and trying to figure out what was happening. Um, like, I mean, I can't even imagine, like, being on the moon like you're so isolated from earth and it's so scary enough to be that far from other human beings but then it's like uh, there's all this paranormal freaky shit happening and you have nobody it's so terrifying so i highly recommend that one if you're into horror books that take place in outer space all right so those are all the books that i read in the month of september um as i said i had a pretty good reading month i enjoyed almost everything that I read. I mean, with the exception of a few disappointments with like everything, everything and whatnot. Next month is October and it's one of the best, in my opinion, reading months of the year. I just think that's such a perfect time of year. It's cold and it's fall and it's before Halloween and it's cozy. So I am hoping to get a lot of creepy books in next month and I have a couple of books on my TBR that I'm hoping to get to next month. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer and maybe The Murder Complex. We'll see how it goes and maybe I'll start reading a little bit more Stephen King next month but I'll see if I have the time for that. <laughs> Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time.